This video is sponsored by Caliper. Water. It's essential for all living things on this planet and arguably the most valuable commodity that we have. But what if I told you that it was disappearing? You see, governments across the globe are scrambling to find out why some of the water going in this end doesn't come out this end. This deficit is called non-revenue water and with millions of litres being lost per year, it's no wonder that authorities are trying to find out exactly where it's all going. Well, so I've been sent on a mission to track down where this mysterious water is leaking from and what authorities are doing to try and find it. So I guess the best place to start would be at the beginning. Ah, oh, damn it. Not that dam, this dam. Welcome to Gadidia Dam. Located in Melbourne's southeastern suburbs, it services, well, Melbourne's southeast. And it's reservoirs just like the one behind me where retailers purchase their water at wholesale rate. Southeast Water, the main beneficiary of this reservoir, recently reported that they received over 155,000 megalitres of water for this annual year. That's a lot of water. Of that, they recorded that their customers consumed around 143,000 megalitres and the rest was non-revenue. And as the name suggests, this is the water that they've already paid for that they can't charge back to their customers. But retailers are fighting back. Digital water meters are being tried. 250,000 old school water meter. Wireless water meters. Smart devices like the Captus Pulse Light, which is being installed behind me, are being deployed across water networks globally. You see, traditional meter reading can be unreliable, so providing real-time and accurate data really helps water authorities understand their customers' consumption. I'm gonna check in later to see how my usage is getting on, but that's just one piece of the puzzle. This is called a zone flow meter, and if Wait, I've got something. Analogies. So if Cadinia Dam was the trunk and the digital metering were the leaves produced, then this thing would almost certainly be capturing the damage caused to the tree. Sorry, tree. You see, hundreds of IoT devices, just like this Captus Multi, is being installed across the branches and twigs of water networks globally. The idea of these is to kind of act like a checking mechanism. And the more of these that you have, the more leaks you can detect. And this is where it really gets interesting. Every day, water mains burst all over the world. But as devastating as these are, they really don't happen that often and only account for a small portion of non-revenue water. So if it's not these water fountains that retailers are concerned about, what is? Let's go. So this is my local creek and it is absolutely swarming with mosquitoes after the amount of rain we've had. And it's here where I'm searching for one of the most elusive of water creatures there is, the leak. Let's go. Found a spoon drain, and it looks like it's got a bit of a trickle of water coming down it. Let's go check it out. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's a mosquito. <laughs> Check this out. This is a stormwater drain that goes into the creek. And you could see how dry it was at the actual pipe. But then to the side, there was just a small amount of water trickling down the outside. And that's because water leaks that happen in the network actually tend to find the path of least resistance. And that's usually around pipes that already exist. Now what I'm doing is measuring the amount of water coming out. Oh my God, these mosquitoes. So 
that's one minute. Now let's pretend that that was about one liter. It doesn't sound like much, but extend that out across a whole year and you've got almost half a megaliter of water. Then times that by a thousand leaks, you've got a lot of water leaking. And whilst the big leaks and bursts are concerning, it's these small ones that take up the majority of non-revenue water. But with IoT devices like the Captus Pulse and Multi, we're able to detect these tiny, tiny leaks earlier, which is ultimately better for the water authorities, their customers, and the environment. A massive thank you to Caliper, the sponsor of this video and the maker of the Captus IoT devices. Now, it's been some time since I've had the Captus device installed on my water meter and I wanted to check in to see how it was going. But first, I want you to meet Borum. He was the legend who was installing my meter earlier in the video. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, once you do it a few times, um, you can get the hang of it and I feel like anyone could do it if they had, you know, a bit of exposure to it, so yeah. Cut! Boren, that was awesome, mate. Thanks. I did want to have a chat to you. Yeah. Um, I was hoping that uh, you could probably rig up that Captus pole so I could get some free water or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Oh, I might have to speak to my boss about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't really get Boren across the line with free water, go figure. But in a roundabout way, I did get some water back because on the Caliper app, I found a tiny leak. At first, I thought it was kind of rubbish data, but as I walked around the house, I actually found a tap that was left on by the kids using super soakers. <laughs> I don't want to know how much that's been costing me. So if you're looking for a simple and robust IoT solution for your assets, why don't you head on over to caliper.com and check out what they've got to offer. <laughs> I wonder if they've got a solution for stopping birds chirping while I'm doing sponsored segments.